Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Peace be upon you all. Um, <coughs> um, so I'm going to read a, a tiny verse from the Quran. Um, well, a part of the verse. And, um, uh, and then I'm going to introduce you to um, our guest speaker tonight. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. فَقْصُصِ الْقَصَصَ لَعَلَّهُمْ يَتَفَكَّرُونَ So relate the story. Perchance they may reflect. And by reflecting on evidence, on <clears throat> and by reflecting evidence on what you have, on the evidence you have, you knock on the doors of objective thinking. Thinking is a multi-step process. And like any process, errors can occur along, along any step of, the, of this process. With that being said, I'd like to thank Dr. Tariq Abu Ghazali for coming today to draw our attention to these thinking errors. And I would like to thank you all for coming today to understand them and hopefully strive to self-improvement. Dr. Tara Abu Ghazali is a Palestinian Syrian American cardiologist and one of the most renowned experts on the topics of objective thinking, so, um, objective thinking, subjective thinking, and modes of thinking. He's the founder and chairman of the Circle for Intellectual Revival of Concept, of concept Learning and Education. The Circle is an intellectual organization dedicated to producing a moderate Muslim mind, then, cause, then can reason using um, objective and value thinking. The Circle bases its work on the Quran, the Sunnah, and the scientific foundation of the early Islamic scholarly work. Dr. Abu Ghazal is a fellow of the American College of, Card uh, American College of Cardiology and a fellow of the Society of coronary angiography and interventions and the Islamic Medical Association of North America. He currently resides in Doha, Qatar, where he is a senior consultant cardiologist at Hamad Medical Corporation. And so, ladies and gentlemen, or as I should call you guys, brothers and sisters, on behalf of the Muslim Youth and Education City um, Organization, I give you thought, Dr. Tara Abu Ghazal. Uh, thank you very much for this um, invitation to come and talk to you. It's an honor to be at, at this hall in front of uh, college students uh, who are always, um, who represent the, the future, the very near future. The Thinking Errors is one of the lectures in a series of lectures that starts with the uh, definition of thinking, then it goes into the um, objectivity, what it means, objective methods, and then truth and what truth means and how we deal with the truth how, once we find it. And then finally, thinking errors. Last year, we talked about methodology of objectivity. And this year, I was asked to come and give a different lecture, so we went directly to thinking errors because each one of those lectures is a block in itself and it can be, um, it can be on, on its own. So the thinking errors, I'm going to start now. I just need to switch. Okay. So what are thinking errors? Thinking errors are not, well, if you Google thinking errors, you're going to find something about logic and uh, uh, fallacies, thinking fallacies. This is not what I mean here by thinking errors. Thinking errors here subscribe to the Muslim world. The Muslim world for the past 500 years have not produced really, or they have produced, but they have not produced enough for civilization compared with other civilizations. At the time, before 500 years, the Muslim civilization, civilization was, was producing for civilization. And it was, uh, uh, it was a bridge or part of the civilization continuum. If you talk about the Greek civilization, the Roman civilization, comes then the Islamic civilization, and then it bequeathed what it had inherited from the previous civilizations to the Western civilization, which then takes over. So, but the, the thinking heresies are not the logic fallacies that we're going to talk about. It is something that we will deal with what happened to the Muslim mind in terms of thinking errors, and then we'll try to unwind them. And it is, it comes in blocks. So you, you will see how the, the first part of the thinking errors, for example, which is bias, will lead, if it continues the same way, to something, something called illusion, which leads to mal-reasoning. And we'll go through this circle or this cycle of, of thinking. So the first thing about the thinking errors, we have bias. Bias is natural. We're all prone to be biased. The language we use, we'll go through all the things that talk about bias. The language we use is prone to be, uh, to be uh, uh, biased. This is better than this, but why is this better than this? 
the, 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 we'll go through those in detail. The rule and example and the, and the relationship between the rule and example. Every rule has exemptions, has uh, 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 an, exe an, an, an exemption that does not make a different rule. In fact, it ascertains the rule itself. We'll talk about dichotomies and how to understand the dichotomies. Then we'll talk about double standards. If this continues on, if the language becomes always a biased language, always uh, using double standards, always not understanding the dichotomies and what to do, this can lead to a different set of mind, and that is the illusion. Illusion, then this mind becomes uh, uh, occupied by conspiracy theory, by a one-dimension mentality that only sees things through a tunnel vision, and we'll talk about that in details. We come then to two extremes, one is the sacredness of individuals, and then the other one subjecting to the rule of the masses. And those are two extreme ends, and one is just accepting tyranny as it is, and we're just coming out. The Arab world now, really, after 500 years, is just coming out of tyranny, and it's really a painful coming out of that tyranny. And the other one is subjecting to the rule of the masses. If this continues on, being not able to face the masses if they're wrong, being not able to uh, get out of the dictatorship and the tyranny, always anything you see, it's a conspiracy. Conspiracies are there. But anything you just attribute it is the easy way out, is attributing it as conspiracy from the West against the East, and so forth. If this continues on, then we go into something which is called malreasoning. I will take examples of that. This malreasoning is, is, is marked by prejudice, exaggeration, and imbalanced reaction. And you'll see there are prejudiced people that think that black are better than white, white are better than black. They, they, they look at things uh, in terms of I'm better than him, but they don't give a justification. And we'll talk about that in detail. And, the, the, and then everything becomes exaggerated. So exaggeration becomes a language that's always spoken, an, an illusion, and then this leads to imbalanced reaction. Let's talk about language. Uh, man is a human, is, 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 is a, a, a bio uh, creature that's able to speak. And from the moment that human being starts to speak, everybody becomes happy. The language in itself is inherently insufficient to convey ideas, especially if used in forms that use exaggeration, for example, poetry. And we'll talk about that in a second. It, it's a very fertile land. Language is especially the Arabic language, when I talk about. There are, there are in the grammar of the Arabic language, uh, a, a category of phrases or, or, or words we use, they are called afal al They are the verbs of something is better than something. Afal al ma ahsanahu, ma ajmalahu, fulan adka min fulan. Those are, they, they have a category in themselves. So the using this is fine, but we have to use it in the context of objectivity and not use it in a context where it is fulfilling a desire. I'm just making somebody better than somebody because of an inner desire that I, that I have. The other thing about language, the language is, is different from one civilization to the other. And within that one civilization also, it is different from one country to the other. And we used to notice this when you go to the States and then you get to meet Arab people, for example, from Egypt, Palestine, Syria, Morocco, they can use the same terminology, the same phrase. For example, uh, wake up. It could mean totally different things. It could be demeaning to somebody. It could be something very delightful to someone else. So understanding the language, the phrase, will really help you if you are in a, in a, in a, in a debate, if you are in any type of idea exchange with somebody is if you notice that at one point there's a glitch going on, like a computer glitch, you need to come back and reset the language and decide what this word means and what this word means. The West understood 